back at it again. Another review. How's it going, guys? It's your boy, Young Corleone, or if you saw my Snapchat yesterday, last night, I am now Burger King Corleone because I have my own burger stand. That's GTA. Go check out my Snapchat link right here. Um, anywho, today we're going to be talking about something pretty cool, something I've been waiting for for a long time, something my friends have been waiting for for a long time. They were supposed to be here, but they all had plans without me. So go screw yourselves. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, they all had stuff to do. So I don't know, I'm here by myself. I know it's boring when I'm by myself because there's no antics. But it's okay. What's up? So we're going to be talking about the new Black Veil Brides album, Veil. That's what that picture is up there. And uh, that's what this CD is right here. It came out yesterday. Now, I was supposed to put one out yesterday. I just found out that this came out yesterday. And I had work yesterday. I say yesterday a lot. But I picked it up, listened to it a couple times, and I really wanted to make a well-written and re- well-rounded review. So I took my time with it this time. And I think I'm going to do that from now on because it just, you get a better reaction and a better feeling about it. So did I like it? Did I hate it? Did I want to throw it away or did I want to snap it? Did I want to prize it and put it in a glass case? These are all questions that will be answered very shortly. Now it's my commercial break. Welcome back. Okay, so now we're going to talk about Veil. What the hell happened? Okay, so now we're going to talk about it. By itself, as an album, very good. I'm not going to say fan- fantastic. I'm not going to say phenomenal. I'm going to say very good. Why? Because all the songs sound the same. Black Veil Brides is the band that typically has a sound that sticks. That works. So they're going to use it. It's a formula that bands use a lot, that artists use a lot, like Lil Pump. You know, if you look at most of his songs, if not all of his songs, it's extended choruses, one verse and an extended chorus, and a beat that has mainly bass and maybe a little bit of a synth and a lot of hi-hat. So that's the sound that works for him. And for Black Veil Brides, long guitar solos, um, Andy Beer sax, only range voice, and very religious styles of lyrics very very strange religious style of lyrics it works for them and they're going to use it a lot and they did so did i like it yes i did i jam out to it a lot now um the imagery on the cover kind of irks me a little bit it kind of weirds me out um it's like two demons taking apart this dude on a cross in like a death valley looking thing and it's weird um in case you didn't know i am a christian and you know it's very important to me so that kind of weirds me out but it's not going to take me away from the fact that i like to listen to this kind of music and like listen to this band you know, I know where I stand, and I know my limits and my boundaries, so, like I said, the cover art irks me, the songs don't, um, in case you don't know who Black Belt Brides is, you've never seen them before, here's a picture of them, I don't know if you can see them very well, but yeah, they look like employees at Hot Topic, <laughs> and that's another reason why I like to call them a Hot Topic band, Hot Topic band is a term that I think I made up. I'm not going to check to see if I did or didn't because it will disappoint me if I did not. Hot Topic bands are a type of band that wear the makeup, wear the odd clothes, wear the skinny jeans, and have really peculiar hair. And usually you see their band shirts at Hot Topic. How do I know you see the band shirts at Hot Topic? Well, because I get a lot of my band shirts at Hot Topic. Um, I have hot cash, so yeah, I'm, I like Hot Topic. As a whole... The band has gotten me through a lot. The band was introduced to me by a friend of mine named Jander in 2014 when I was over at my friend, other friend Anthony's house who is yet to be on a video. Come on, Anthony, what's up? Um, he's yet to be on a video, but we'll get him on here. We were at Anthony's house and Jander came over. We start playing Minecraft because that's what geeks do. We play Minecraft when we were freshmen because we had nothing better to do, like play basketball or something like that. <laughs> but he starts playing Black Veil Brides, and we start playing Minecraft. And immediately, I was in love with the sound. I was in love with the way the band play the instruments, with the way the singer, um, how his voice sounded. You know, a lot of 
attributes made me really like the band. And I'm glad that, that I do like the band because I have every single one of their albums. If I can get them all here. I have a lot of albums on my desk right now. So, their debut, We Stitch These Wounds, which was very good. Um, Set the World on Fire, another great album. This came out later. Uh, Wretched and Divine. That's the deluxe edition because I liked it that much. And four. Or Black Belt Prize, whatever you want to call it. There's not really a uh, distinction between them. And now I have the new Unveil. So every album my Black Belt Brides is sitting on my desk right now. And I gotta say, this is probably one of the weakest links in it. The new one. Probably one of the weakest links in it. Because if you look back at the, the, uh, the, the uh, blah, 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 disc discography, debut in 2010. Said a name for themselves, made them really, uh, <laughs> made them really popular, actually. Set the world on fire, really made them a staple name, really made, made them a household title to a lot of, uh, emo and goth kids. And Hot Topic kids. Quote on quotes because that's what people like to say. Wretched and Divine came out the following year in 2012, and it was probably their best album at the time. Now, 4 comes out two years later, in 2014, and this was the album that I got becoming their fan. Like, this, I became a fan, and this was the first album that came out as a fan, so that was pretty cool for me. Four years later, in 2018, they come out with this, and the reason I'm disappointed is because it sounds like a direct copy and paste of 4, just with a little more hype. Of Wretched and Divine. Wretched and Divine, the deluxe edition, had about 23, 22, 22 songs, and then like seven or eight, maybe even 10 music videos in the DVD. Now, granted, most of these songs are skits or very short songs that are kind of like interludes, but it had that content, which was really good, which I like. If I'm, I'm going to pay for an album, I want content. I want, you know, a bunch of songs or a DVD or something like that to kind of get me through it and to kind of make it really pop and really awesome, you know? Two years later, 4 comes out and it's like, okay, I like kind of like the new sound. It's uh, a little grimier, a little darker, and I like grimy and dark. It's pretty cool. And we were all hyped up. Me and my buddies, I remember we were just sitting down. We were just like, awesome. This is awesome. I can't wait for the new album to come out because it was 11 songs and 11 songs that are around three minutes to, you know, three to four minutes doesn't really keep you going for four years unless, you know, you really like it. So when Outsider came out in 2016, I believe it was. Yeah, 2016. Fantastic. We were so hyped. We were like, oh my gosh, I cannot wait for this new album to come out. It's going to be awesome. Two years later, this comes out. And I didn't know about any of the singles that came out ahead of time in 2017 because of the fact that I was waiting so long and I was just done. I was just done waiting. I was like, they're never going to come out with a new album. So I had no idea. I found out yesterday that this album came out and I was like, I have to get it. I have to. This has been something I've waiting for forever. And it was awesome listening to it. It was just like they're back. They're fantastic. And they, they all sound the same. It's what is this? This is supposed to be a sequel to the best album they've had. And it... it is underwhelming to say the least now the songs are fantastic like i said i jammed to these all day i was jammed to them all day yesterday and i was jamming to them when i woke up this morning because they're just so good but they all have a very similar tone like i said and it, it, it just it's it doesn't hit my doesn't sit right with my ear you know if it was just a standalone album and i was review and i'm reviewing it by a standalone album yeah fantastic love it Putting it to the rest of their discography, very underwhelming because Ratchet and Divine <clears throat> 4 and We Stitch These Wounds and Set the World on Fire, just so great albums. It's very great. The best being Ratchet and Divine by far because it's, I mean, it just, you know, because it's, uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of disappointed because I've been waiting for it for so long. If it was maybe came out 2016, I'd be a little more accepting. Um, then again, I don't know what was going on behind the scenes, what was going on with um, the record deals, with the, uh, you know, the solo career of Andy. So, I don't know. 
and that's kind of I'm taking that into account as well. Um, I don't know what else more I can say about this. If you're a fan of rock music and you want something new to listen to, this is definitely a contender to go pick up. Um, if you kind of get irked by imagery that is kind of religious or like anti-religious, I they're very confusing. I don't know what they are. Are they religious? Are they anti-religious? Are they just kooks that fought, that read too many King Arthur books? I, I don't know. But if it kind of weirds you out a little bit, I wouldn't say go pick it up. I'd say maybe just listen to a couple songs, see if you like it. And then if you do, then go pick up the album or just go stream it or whatever. So if you really are interested in it, go check it out. I really recommend you get it because it's very good. Now, another thing I forgot to say is that this is the first album out of the bunch that has a parental advisory sticker at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that, but you see like the little block? Yeah, right there. Right there, parental advisory sticker. And it's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> um, anything with a parental advisory sticker is going to catch attention. They say the F word once in my vow. That's the only thing I could catch. I don't know if there's anything else in there, but that was the only thing I could see. Um, so yeah, if you don't like parental advisory, then don't get it because the f-bomb is in it although if you don't care like me then go get it um so overall for the new album by black veil brides titled veil i am going to be giving it a 7 out of 10 because it is just such a good album but it falls short in a lot of places and it does not stand by the time it came out yeah there's that now i'm going to be doing another review the following week on the new not very new but the new five figure death punch album because i just found out about it a couple weeks ago picked it up didn't know if i was going to do a review on it because it is a sort of greatest hits album but then i was like wait a minute there's a couple of new songs on there and people i mean i might want to do a review on those and then i was like but it's just a song reviews so i was like wait a minute content so go put it out so yeah this is gonna be coming out next week um very very excited to do this one because five finger death punch is my all-time favorite band of this generation next to black veil brides so yeah hey listen thank you guys so much for sticking through the video might have been a little long i really don't know i can't see right now i don't have my contacts in and i did not fit to put my glasses on because there's a glare so i can't see what the time of this thing is but i'm pretty sure it's not too long if it is too long then i'm sorry if you stuck through then you are the homie so go follow me on instagram but right here i don't know if it's i don't know how to do so uh go follow me on instagram right here or here or here wherever i can put the title anywhere link will also be in the, you know my info will be on the bio follow me on instagram follow me on snapchat that'll also be in the bio don't know why i'm doing this i don't know how to make it anyway go follow me on my social media for instagram and snapchat to get more info on young corleone everything we're doing and all the songs we're putting out why I say we, it's just me. <laughs> Go follow me for more info about that. More info about more reviews. If you guys have any requests for reviews for new music, I want to make it very clear. I'm only doing new music because if it's what's the point of doing a review of an old album unless I'm doing like a throwback Thursday type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So if you have any new album reviews that you want me to do on something within the last um, few months, being the late, being you know the oldest. Or something new that's coming up. So I can go ahead of time to go pick up the album and you know check it out for myself. I will do that. And yeah, that's all I gotta say. So uh peace.